and we say thank you. We thank you for love divine. We thank you for mercies that are new every morning. And we thank you, God, for the grace that abounds unto us. We thank you for this season in our lives where we have sown and we have come forth to reap a harvest. We thank you because we know and we trust that you are the Lord of harvest. Father, we are grateful as we worship you in the beauty of your holiness and the splendor of your majesty. Father, as we worship you in spirit and in truth today, we ask that the words of our mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable unto you, our Lord and our Redeemer. We thank you, the Lord of harvest, and we open up this service as we thank you, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Amen. Please rise as we take the front hymn, Great is thy faithfulness. But it's only their thing, and it's in June. But 
For the rest of us in Western Asia, we don't have that equivalent. But being a multi-ethnic country, we do celebrate what the Chinese call the Mid Autumn Festival. Um, it's not a public holiday, but it's very commercialized because everywhere will be selling wooden cakes. Okay, so um, last week for um, for you, I brought some wooden cakes. Um, Lynn say they look like pork pies. I mean, they kind of look like pork pies on the outside, but the inside is like um, it's kind of sweet, uh, but not super sweet. Uh, it's like normally red bean or white lotus, or the one that I brought is uh, pandan, which is a very local Malaysian flavor. Um, yeah. And normally when we sell mooncakes, it's always packaged in very elaborate packaging, and it's very expensive. So we normally give this out to people. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so Mid Autumn just finished. It was last Friday on the 29th of September. Maybe some of you saw that the moon was really round on that day. Mm -hmm. Round and bright, yeah. Um, I heard it was also the last super moon of the year. And that's why we call it the, that, that's how I sometimes we also call it the Mooncake Festival as well, because we make the mooncakes in observance of the moon. Um, and while there is a myth and history on how Mid Autumn come about, uh, I don't really know it because I didn't grow up with it. I really grew up eat this, eating the mooncakes. <laughs> <laughs> and um, as a kid, I would also play with lanterns. And um, everyone that I know who celebrates Mid Autumn as well, we don't really like know, know the cultural implications of it. But what we do always do for the, the festival is that we will come together as friends or family. If we are away from friend, um, family, then we will come together as friends to enjoy each other's company, you know, to eat more cakes, of course. Um, it's a reunion of sorts, and we will have food, um, play with lanterns, play with fireworks. And it's, it's um, I think it's relatable to harvest, you know, because it's, Besides observing the changing of the seasons, it's also a time that we spend time with our loved ones and appreciate God's creation in uh, nature, in the moon, and what we have harvested, what He has blessed us with. My order was a bit wrong. So please stand as I'll be you in this song called uh, Blessed Be the Name of the Lord. We have some new people. So please bear with me. <laughs> please join me in singing. Thank you. 
my whole heart that my whole life and with my innermost being. I bow in wonder and love before you, the holy God, Yahweh, you are my soul's salvation. How could I ever forget the miracles of kindness you've done for me? You kissed my heart with forgiveness, in spite of what I've done. You healed me inside and out from every disease. You rescued me from hell and saved my life. You clung to me and loved me in my mercy. You satisfied my every desire as a Christian. You supercharged my life so that I saw again my pride and human You are God who makes me my human justice and defenses. Bless the reading of the word of God in Jesus' name. Now the kids will be going for service soon. I know this is not how things are done in this church, but where I come from in Malaysia, my church um, is a big thing. Some, there are always time, we always dedicate some time for in whatever we do, or whether it's our youth gatherings, our church activities. There's some time for us to give thanks for what God has done for us, you know, it's, it's a short testament or something in the week that has happened that we're thankful for. Um, and I also don't know why, but we observe Thanksgiving, even though it's a very American thing. Um, and we do that by having a Thanksgiving service to allow everyone in the church to share their testimony. It's a bigger church than this. So everyone was limited to two sentences. So I was thinking for this harvest service, um, testimonies would be a nice chance for us to, as a church, to share what God has provided for us, um, what God has done in our community, and, and His goodness. So for the past two weeks, I've been asking some of you if you could share a little something for what God, you have been thankful uh, to God for this year. Um, there's no limit to how long, how short, please don't feel pregnant. It's entirely up to you how much you want to share. Um, yeah, so I'll start us off with my own testimony and then I'll call some of you up here to share your testimony. Um, so I'm thankful to God for this church because I did not expect to come to church <laughs> when I came to the UK. Uh, yeah, because in a few years before COVID um, hit, I stopped going to church because my church was too big. It started to become very personal. It felt like uh, it felt like there was like the church has lost focus. It became all about the building. Um, I shared this in for you last week that you know the the church, my church built a convention center. It was called Calvary Convention Center. It can seat like 5,000 people. It seems like a very big church, but um, I don't think we fill up all the seats. But every time a pastor comes up, they will always thank the senior pastor for the opportunity to be speaking. And I don't know, that felt kind of wrong. It was just like, why are you thanking the senior pastor? So I stopped going to church because it, it was just not right with me. Um, and when I came here, it was during the pandemic, October 2020. There was no opportunity to come to church. <laughs> but I did start deciding, okay, I should try, because churches look like a big thing in the UK. And I, it's a very different um, church. I came from a Protestant church, so this is a very traditional church to me. But I just came in an open mind and like, it's, it's all the same. We're all celebrate. Um, we're all worshiping the same God. And I came in here in June 2021, and I keep coming because everyone is so welcoming. And yeah, we have to thank God for leading me to this church. Thank you. <laughs> so the next person I'll call up to share their testimony. 
will be added. Um, thank you, Leanne, for inviting. Um, I actually don't feel comfortable speaking in public, but I need to thank God for this opportunity because when I pray about it, there seems to be tons of things I need to share, to be thankful for. So just before I came to London to work, which was last year in July 2022, um, I've been attending a church led by an American pastor, and of course we celebrated Thanksgiving, and the whole congregation is asked to put up their hands, what they would want to thank, be thankful for for that year. Um, so there are loads of things I would like to, but maybe a little bit of background about myself. Um, so, I was born and I grew up and I was raised in Hong Kong, which was an ex-British colony. And then at the age of 16, I went to school in Canada because my uncle, which is the younger brother of my father, um, lives in Ottawa. After one year of high school, I went to university at London, Ontario. So it's, a, it's London, Canada. Never expected to ever live in London, UK. After I graduated, went back to Hong Kong, got married, started my job, my career there. I was with my family throughout. Um, I got to know, I, I, I met God when I was in Ottawa and I got baptized in a Baptist church. Um, but when I went home in, to Hong Kong, started my job, got married, I stopped going to the church, basically. Um, disobeyed God for many things ended up with a broken marriage, lost my job, went through ups and downs in life, even went through um, you know, a, a surgery because I twisted my ankle and I had to operate on my leg. But for all that, it was a blessing in disguise. Throughout all that, I learned from God how His grace has never left me. In 2021, God basically closed one door. What happened was, I did not get along with the boss, the new boss, and she basically kicked me out and basically gave me a deadline to say, this is the ultimatum and I'm putting someone in to replace you. Um, I was devastated. I didn't want to be without a job. I applied externally, internally, and fortunately it's a global bank that I work for. It's a French bank, by the way. Um, I think I applied for more than 10 or 20 jobs. Never got me anywhere until this position in London suddenly got um, a vacancy and I applied and my boss gave me the offer. So I think God really closed that door and opened this door for me to come. Um, without any thoughts, um, I talked to my parents and I said, look, I, I need a job, I want a job, I'm just going to go to London and work. So I got relocated here through what they call internal mobility. That was last year in July. And then, um, October, I found this place in Harrow, uh, a flat in Harrow. Now, to go through all that, during the three months, I was put up in a service apartment provided by the firm. But I had to do 36 flats. I made five offers, and remember, I had a job. All unsuccessful. I was crying in the end. I thought I'm gonna be sleeping on the street. You know, I don't want to pay for a hotel after that. Um, then I walked into this area, um, Morrison's, and I saw this big sign there saying luxurious service apartment. And I'm going, okay, this is not for me, but you know, I'm gonna just Google search and see what happens. I called them and they had availability for one flat. So without second thought, I know that this is the place that God has prepared for me. And hence, since I moved to Harrow, I found this church, have to be thankful for this church again, you know, very friendly people, got invited to British families, like to um, Ian's place, to Brian's place, experience the summer of um, Britain, but really it's the grace of God that really hands on me all the time. So two things I really want to be thankful for this year, basically just to summarize. Since moving to London, I think God has continued to change me and continue to work on me. I learned to be a little bit more patient. I realized being away from home how much I miss them, how much I love my parents and what I should be doing to them. 
That's the first thing. And the second thing is, um, I am the Christian in my family. So is my brother, but not my parents. Um, but miraculously, after I left, my mother went to um, um, an evangelical class and she got baptized this year in April during Easter. So, thank you. And I remember this um, Bible verse in, from Acts chapter 16, verse 31. Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, you and your household. And it's really true. Thank you. So the next person to share his testimony is Chris. not uh, too big events where uh, things happened uh, happening in my life but I can say that uh, yes I uh, praise him and I thank him for even this day for even every single person in this church you would say oh come on how could you yes because Everything goes in my life, in our lives, is good for us as the believers. Even if we like it or not, we always learn something. For example, Lord, I don't have much love. Please give me love. But love is not uh, something that comes all of a sudden. God prepares like situations for people with problems around you and you say <laughs> so what can I do now now you start uh, love you learn how to love who oh Lord these people yes of course whoever are in your in front of your eyes you learn how to love this is one of the things I can say yes, he, he takes care of me and my family about money, about food, about health, about many other things. And uh, yes, I, I am thankful and I, I start understanding what mean. Uh, now I'm just to simplify things, to, to say things just according to this church, yes. I need to understand. Yeah, Lord, I, I, I thank you and I appreciate the way you've done in my life to be with these people. Did I have to learn something? It's about eight years. Yes. I, I have found friends. I have found everything. I have found uh, many other beautiful situations. Why? Because every single man, woman, is very precious in God's eye. I'm not saying, from my side, I can see you such way. I have to learn, I have to work more in my life. But I want to. I want you, I want to because you are precious. So, God bless you all. And yes, of course, uh, praise the Lord and I thank Him for everything. So, the next testimony is from Dorothea. Uh, Dorothea prefers that I read it out and I understand the situation. So, this is her testimony. How a food bank is a charitable trust affiliated to the Trust of Trust. Well, the Trinity Church Lowstone is where I'm a volunteer, operating since June 2013. We offer emergency food to people or families in crisis. The offer for food is for three days, or three meals a day for two days. 
Our distribution centers are Lena's Main Baptist Church in North Harrow and Holy Trinity Church in Eastern. The locations are stored at the Phoenix Business Center in Harrow. Thanks to the kindness of yourself and people of Harrow, we help many people and families who find themselves in unexpected situations. Uh, food spent since April 1st, 2023. We have fed 4,014 people. Holy Trinity Church has fed 2,308 of the 4,014 people, which were 1,755 adults and 1,706 children, which equates to 1448 positive. Um, and she wants to share a, a mission, uh, the food bank mission with. For I was hungry, you fed me. I was thirsty, you gave me a drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, you clothed me. I was sick, you looked up to me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. From Matthew 25, verse 35 to 36. So thank you to everyone who shared testimony today. I'll hope to share a little bit more later. I will be sharing hers as well. Uh, for now, we will stand together to sing our next hymn. Uh, now can we all our God. <laughs>
There's a speaking forth of the goodness and of the mercies of God. Many times in life we take a lot of things for granted because we think they are what ought to be. But I have learned that until you go to the other side, you will not know what it feels like not to have food. Dorothea was sharing her testimony about the food bank. But when you have to be hungry, then you would understand what it is to have a proper meal. When you are in the hospital and you can't even eat, but there's food, but there's no strength to eat, then you understand what it is to be hungry. Chris was sharing about the love of Jesus. When you are faced with difficult situations or difficult challenges in life, or difficult things to overcome, you would understand the love of God. You know, in Nigeria, we celebrate the festivals. There are three festivals as recorded in the scriptures. The festival of the, the Feast of the Tabernacle, that's the Shabbat, the first food, the unleavened bread. But we don't celebrate them as recorded in scriptures. We celebrate them as times. You know, we have the, in the spirit realm, we have what you call the chronological time. That's January to December. But we also have what is called the Kairos moment, which are spiritual times in God's agenda. And in Nigeria, this season is a spiritual time in God's agenda because many churches are celebrating the turn of a new year. So the Pentecostal Church, the Redeemed Christian Church of God, has entered into a new year. So they start a new year, which is recorded from September. To them, it's a Kairos moment. God is doing something in this time and in this season. It's beautiful that in Nigeria, we have come into a season where we are talking about rejoicing, but rejoicing in the place of dance. So many things happening in Nigeria now revolves around dance, worship. And the scriptures of focus is David. When David took the Ark of Covenant back to Jerusalem, after he spent some time in the house of Abinadab, the Bible says that David danced in his priestly garment, even as a king, without fear or favor as to who was there. And he danced so much because he rejoiced in the God of his salvation. And his wife, Micah, at that time, the only woman ever recorded in the Bible to be made barren, she laughed at him and stormed, like, how can a king dance like this? And the Bible says God shut her womb. So oftentimes, there are many things, the season of harvest, as Lynn has spoken, and everyone before me, is a season of harvest, to thank God for his faithfulness. The year has gone so fast. All of a sudden, we're in October. When did we say Happy New Year? But we are all here. We are alive. We are well. When the children came in this morning, I saw the boys, they were dancing. And I said to myself, out of the mouth of babes and infants, even God has obtained praise. They were reckless in their father's house. They understood what harvest is. And I'm going to be sharing harvest, personal you know, testimonies, using our scripture that we shared today in Psalm 103, verses 1 to 6. And like I said, every time David asked us to bless the Lord, he gave us a reason why. And he says, bless the Lord, all oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. He says, bless the Lord who forgets not all his benefits. Which one of the benefits of God can I deny? The benefits of sleeping and waking up. Sometimes we think it's our alarm clock that woke us up. But the Bible says in, in the book of the Psalms, it says, I lay down and I sleep and I wake up, for the Lord sustains me. So sometimes, even when we think it's our alarm clock that woke us up, it's God that indeed wakes us up. And I will not forget the benefits of peace in my mind, peace in my body. You know, some of us have had little challenges here and there. For the past couple of weeks, I've had challenges with my back, excruciating pain. But you know, as I spoke the word of God, as I remember what the psalm says, it says he will protect my bones, not one shall be broken. I have seen God turn this situation around from when I couldn't even stand up because I had excruciating back pain. To me standing here and speaking to you is the faithfulness of God. I've had the benefit of going out and coming in. People leave their houses in the morning and sometimes they don't return. We start the day happy and something happens in the middle of the day. But we have all gone out and come back. Because the Bible tells us in the book of Psalms, I will bless you going and you're coming even from now and forevermore. I have had the blessing of family. 
of loved ones in the church, my home, and in the church space. The Bible says we should not forsake the gathering of the brethren. Every time we gather, even on our WhatsApp group, you know, the church group, someone says something that is witty, someone says something humorous, we share, you know, we share ideas, we share the gift of God amongst ourselves. When we go to our homes, we are blessed by the gift of family. When we come here, we are blessed by the gift of family. We are blessed by the gift of every good thing that the Lord has given us. He said, forget not all his benefits. He says, who forgives all our iniquities. Alice was sharing her wonderful testimony that I wish you also share. I am here. I am redeemed of the Lord. Someone paid the price for me. He went to the cross, excruciating pain. No man can ever take the pain that Jesus paid the price for us. But I'm standing here, not by my own strength, not because I have done something that I'm so good, but because Jesus paid the price for me, that I can gather and I can come in. That is a harvest. If there's no, nothing else, I call that the Lord of the harvest. The Bible says, who healed all my diseases? I just spoke about excruciating back pain now. And many of us have had one challenge, health challenge or the other. I remember, I celebrate September. Five years ago, my daughter, Kenny, was involved in a drowning accident. They brought her out of the pool. She was dead. It wasn't that she was alive, she was blue. But I remember that at that season of my life, I had been spending a lot of time praying. And as soon as I saw her, the scripture that just came into my mind was the scripture of Jesus raising Lazarus. And I started speaking the word. I said, Lord, this is not the agreement I had with you concerning this child. And I kept saying, Kenny, as Jesus spoke to Lazarus, come forth. We spent the next three weeks in the ICU. Many, three people died in the ICU while we were there. At a point in time, the machine, the CPAP machine they had put in her wasn't working. And she had started swelling up. Water had filled her body. But it was something that the Holy Spirit had ministered to me then. Even as she was lifeless, I would feed her with the communion because of the life and the body of Jesus Christ. And there was, when everything was lost, they had gotten to a point where the doctors didn't know what to do anymore with her. They had ordered a machine that was going to take three weeks to come, and we had spent another three weeks then, and I just lost it in the hospital. But I told God, I said, God, today you're going to turn things around. And this God, he did. As I went back to feed her with the communion, she wasn't saturating oxygen. All of a sudden, her oxygen was up. At the time, by the time we left the hospital, the hospital had dubbed her the miracle baby. Everyone wanted to meet this child. Five years down the line, I am still celebrating that faithfulness of God because I would have been celebrating the loss of the child. But that child, God kept for me. The Bible says, it says, who redeems our life from destruction and crowns us with loving kindness and tender mercies. His mercies are new every morning. No matter, today we have a new mutation of his mercy. Tomorrow we're not going to carry over that mercy because God's love towards us is tender. He has shown me his tenderness. Alice was sharing her testimony. I never knew I was going to relocate to the, uh, to the United Kingdom. It was never part of the plan. I was that Nigerian girl that loved Nigeria. I wanted to live in Nigeria all the rest of my life. God's plans was different for me. At the time when the COVID hit, you know, I would just go into my room. My daughter has a saying, she said, when she wants something new, say, Mommy, out with all that you will believe. And I would just give out stuff, not knowing where I was going to get the stuff again. But it was just God that was planning this. And even by the time I joined this church, when I relocated to the United Kingdom, I used to go to a Pentecostal church, but it was very far. You know, it was. In, it was it's up in Houston, but they didn't have a children's church. I grew up as a Baptist in a children's church. I just thought, my children did not go to church. That was not how I grew up. And one of those days, I didn't want to go to church, and I sat down, and I told myself, and I just told God, simple prayer, Lord, lead me to a church. And my children and I took a walk that morning, and for God's intervention, we walked into this church service. Uh -huh. And I have loved the family of this church. They are kind. We care so much for each other. We are mindful of each other as Christ is mindful of us. I am 
grateful for that. That is the tender mercies and the loving kindness of God being exhibited in our lives. And every day I thank God for being a part of this family. You know, he says, and he renews our our wings like an eagle. You know, every day, next week I'm going to be adding another year, I'm going to be 45. But I don't feel like it. I'm sure you we have challenges. None of us feel like that. Because the Lord renews our strength. Every day. I look at Joe, I look at John and James. And they are renewed. Every day. I look at Peter, I look at Lord, I look at Brian. I look at all of us. The Lord has renewed our strength. We have so much to be thankful for. I never take anything for granted. Because like I said, when we've been on the other side of the spectrum, you would understand what it is to enjoy health. Last year, my birthday, I was struggling with COVID. But this year is a different year altogether. I am grateful. I am thankful even to stand on this pulpit today and to say thank you, God, for the things that he has done and he continues to do. Out of his abundance, we have brought forth, even for those that are in need. It's enough to give thanks that the Lord has abounded unto us grace to even give. It's not a religious activity, it is a spiritual activity. So, like in Nigeria, this is a season, it's not a chronological season, it's a Kairos moment. God is doing something in our lives, through our lives, for our lives, and with our lives. And I'm grateful to God. Of harvest of family, of souls, of life, of peace, of joy, of strength, and of faith. Testimonies are a faith extender. They extend your faith. They make you know that there's a God that dwells in the midst of men doing great and mighty things. And I thank God today that all of us are here together to share the faithfulness and the Father, we are grateful for your harvest. Thank you. And I give God all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, um, going to sing another song. It's also actually a very beautiful song because this is a song that we normally sing in my um, youth gatherings in this uh, So I'll teach you this song. And then he's done after I teach you, he's done the same with you. I will be 
I'm getting a chicken with this. I'm sorry. But she helped me to pay that debt off 
And I thought she had lent me the money. So when I say, tell me how I'm going to pay back every month a hundred pounds. And she said, no, what if I say I don't want to pay you back? And I just couldn't believe it. I was like, wow, God. So only God can do that. May God bless that lady who did it. Hallelujah. So the final testimony was a health one. Um, I had boiled a cup of tea. I was boiling water for a cup of tea. But I like to use ginger, crushed ginger, to make the real Ugandan tea. So I cooked ginger in a, a pot. I crushed it, put it in a pot, and put boiling water in it. I set it to boil again. But as I was moving the pot, it went all over me like, you know, the arms, the, the breasts, and everything. I, I was like, oh my good heavens, and it was scalding, and I went for the blood of Jesus. I called the blood of Jesus, and I started pouring cold water over myself, and I said, blood of Jesus, blood of Jesus. About 10 minutes later, the pain was completely gone. I looked at my body and there was no sign of scalding except a tiny little scar on my breast. I think the Lord wanted to show me that if I had not called the blood of Jesus, that was supposed to happen to the whole of my body, but it did not happen. My God, the Lord, the God is awesome. He is beautiful. But I also like the fact that we've been sharing Psalm 103. Verse 1 to verse 6. I use Psalm 103, verse 1 to verse 5 every day. And the Lord has renewed my youth. I am 68 years old. And I know I don't look it. So I must say, <laughs> <laughs> the Lord is good. His word is really awesome. Thank you. Bible says in the book of 2 Corinthians 9, it says God is able to make all grace and grace to us. God gave unto the church his grace to be able to offset his debt because he has paid the debt for us even before the foundation of the world. When he was crucified on the cross, he said, it is finished. So he makes that grace available to us. Now Chris is going to be sharing a testimony. Um, I just want to say that um, during COVID, um, I used to walk with a friend in the park because we were allowed to be together and chat out in the open air. She had a few problems and I've been praying for her. Um, she isn't yet a Christian, but she was describing to me how she felt sometimes. She said sometimes she felt as if she was in a boat and it would be rocking from side to side and rocking that way too. And she said when she felt like that, she would then go into a ball and she would just be safe in the bottom of the boat. And when she was talking to me about this, it, it was amazing because it was daytime and we were walking in the park and I had a beautiful, beautiful vision. I don't often have visions in dreams or anywhere else and suddenly I had a beautiful vision. The vision was the boat. She was in the bottom of the boat and holding on to the side of the boat was Jesus. And it was just, it was just so beautiful. And I'm very thankful to God for the vision he gave to me then. Amen. When the Messianic prophecy came by Isaiah, one of the names Jesus was called, he said, for unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulder. And his name, one of the names he was called, is the Prince of Peace. When Jesus is in the boat, even when the storms come, 
The Bible says he slept, and the disciples said, Let me die in this boat. And he said he spoke to the storm, and he rebuked the wind, and he said, Peace be still. Until you get to that point where every storm is raging, you will never understand what it means to have peace. Thank you, Chris, for that testimony. Anyone else would like to share a testimony of faithfulness of God? God has indeed been faithful. This year I have seen a long, marvelous, mind-blowing testimony. You know, I have seen people, I have, there are some illnesses I have never heard of before that I've heard of this year. There was a cancer I heard of, I've never heard about it before, prevalent in women. It's called the triple negative cancer. It starts as a lump in the breast and it's the most aggressive cancer. Once it comes, you have barely about a month as a woman. And I've seen two women this year got healed from that cancer only by the hand of the Lord. I have seen mighty things that God has done. And I know even in our lives, as small as it is, is still a testimony. My testimony might be different from yours, but it doesn't make it any less. You know, we've heard testimonies of deliverances, of healing. You know, I tell people that the the way you speak to an atheist when they ask you there's a God is in Psalm 103. There's a God that heals, he forgives, he delivers, he renews, he loads us daily with benefits. We are a product of his mercy and of his grace. Even our sitting down here today, it's not by our own doing or by our own volition. At best, we don't want to come to church. We can watch it online. But something prompted us to be here today. And it's the spirit of the living God. And I want to thank God for everyone here. I want to thank God for Andrew having a great time on his holiday with Jules and Siggy. You know, and their family portrait. Beautiful family portrait. That's the beauty of family. You know, and we thank God for even all the children that are, I was speaking to Nathan's mom this morning. I'm having a talk in a school next week. And I was looking for a child to give an example of the symbiotic relationship between school teaching and parental teaching. And I was going to use the church as an example. And I was going to use Nathan. And I checked on the school website. And it's Nathan's picture that has been used as, a, as one of the school the pictures of the students in the website. How lovely is this, our God? You know, the Bible says, Our children shall be taught of the Lord, and great shall be our peace. So I thank God today, even if we all don't have testimonies to share, I know that we are all a living testimony. We are God's hands. The Bible says in the book of John 4, it says, when Jesus was looking at his disciples, it says some will say it's four months, some will say it's three months, but the harvest is now. And on that note, I want to share with us briefly on the spirit of evangelism. Oftentimes, people don't have an understanding of what evangelism is. They think if you have to go on the street and talk to people, yes, that's true. But even sharing a testimony is evangelizing. Speaking about our Lord of all and our Lord in all. Sharing, we have shared, is the God that has delivered, has healed us. That is evangelism. Speaking the word of God. You're not speaking in your own strength, you're speaking about this God that is almighty. The Bible calls him the El Shaddai. The Greek word or the Hebrew meaning means the almighty. There's nothing or anyone mightier than that God. And we are all a product of him, made in his image after his likeness. And he will do great things in our lives and he's doing great things through our lives. In the next couple of months, Christmas is around the corner. More rejoicing, more eating. You know, there are many plans that Brian has made. Those plans are out of the roof. But we are grateful that we are all still here. 2023. 2024 and beyond, we're going to harvest in joy, in peace, in good health, in sound mind, long life. Such will be as our portion as recorded in scripture in the mighty name of Jesus. Next, we'll be taking our offering.